the Sun. It is the ultimate source of virtually all the energy on Earth. It's the dynamo that drives the weather, and its energy, fixed in simple sugars by photosynthesis, directly or indirectly fuels almost every living thing on our planet. This story begins with the use of NASA technology used in space that is now being used to help cancer patients on Earth. A light technology developed by Ron Ignatius, founder and CEO of Quantum Devices in Barneville, Wisconsin, was used for plant growth experiments in space. And it was quickly realized that this technology had medical applications. NASA funded a project with Quantum to develop a device that would be used in clinical trials for cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy and radiation. The mucositis are very painful sores that result in the, in the mouth and the throat after large doses of chemotherapy. How, how does your mouth feel today? It's very sore today. Okay. What about your throat? It's very sore. It hurts when I swallow. The clinical trials were performed at the University of Alabama, Birmingham Hospital, the Children's Hospital of Birmingham, and the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. The clinical trial proved that the device was successful in reducing the pain of, of chemotherapy and radiation in cancer patients. And Quantum Devices is now in the process of receiving FDA approval for the use of the device for cancer patients and other medical issues as well. The results were very exciting and I have to say that this is the fastest accruing trial that we've ever seen. Everybody wanted to be part of that NASA trial and so um, patients were um, randomized to either receive the light therapy or they got a sham or a placebo um, non-effectual therapy and they got the therapy. It was applied to both cheeks and to the throat um, for several days following the chemotherapy. I see this as a win-win situation. First off, we have the situation where this therapy does not cause any harm. No side effects, no harm, so it's great for the patient in that aspect. The second is, is that if you decrease the mucositis, then there's a lot of potential areas where you're impacting positively for the patient. You can decrease pain, which means less narcotics. You can improve the amount of um, nutrition that they're able to take, less IV therapy. They don't have to be hooked up to the machines as much. And potentially, if you can get them off the narcotics faster and their mouths can heal faster, you may even at some point in time be able to um, see them getting out of the hospital faster, which definitely the patients like. Sunlight is made of UV, visible and infrared light. It has long been known that UV light causes the production of vitamin D. More recently, it has been discovered that on the opposite side of the light spectrum, near infrared light actually stimulates the mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cells, which produces more adenosine triphosphate, commonly known as ATP. ATP is the chemical energy that affects the metabolism in every cell and muscle in your body. 
Near-infrared light also stimulates DNA synthesis and regeneration, which affects the elasticity of collagen, resulting in younger-looking skin. This same process can also speed up the rebuilding of muscle tissue after a workout, therefore reducing or even eliminating the muscle soreness you feel the following day. Infrared naturally stimulates the release of HGH, the body's key to youth and strength. HGH affects your muscle tone, body fat, energy, stamina and sex drive. HGH normally starts decreasing in your 30s, causing your body to lose its youthful shape and vigor. Anodyne therapy emits monochromatic infrared energy at a wavelength of 890 nanometers from 60 superluminous diodes from each therapy pad. While infrared light at this wavelength is not visible to the human eye, it penetrates 3 to 5 centimeters into body tissue and through a biological cascade causes the liberation of a compound called nitric oxide from hemoglobin in the blood. This release of nitric oxide causes vasodilation of local blood vessels, which indirectly relieves pain caused by lack of blood flow. Over 20 million people suffer from pain due to circulatory problems, and the causes are many. Clearly the uh, most common cause is, uh, is diabetes, and we see that very, very commonly here in our institution. In addition to diabetes, lower extremity circulatory pain can also be caused by alcohol abuse, peripheral vascular disease, certain drugs like statins, chemotherapy, trauma, and autoimmune conditions like HIV AIDS. And the effects on quality of life can be debilitating.